Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the OG Pod. I'm Zach Harper. We got Wozni Lambre. So this is a Zosny production by Anthony Mays. And of course, our floater, our fluffer, Amin El Hassan is no, that's no I'm good. Not a, okay. I'm not a fluffer. Uh, our guest. Uh, our guest Amin El Hassan <laughs> is joining us today. We got uh, we got three topics for you. We're going to talk about uh the Bucks firing Adrian Griffin. The CNN part of it all with the reporting. And of course, Doc Rivers taking over. We'll let you know our thoughts on the heat trading for the scariest, terriest guard in the NBA. And then you run over to that Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings. You will get our thoughts on Embiid dropping 70, Cat dropping 62. And of course, Anthony Edwards' reaction to the Wolves. Just super wolvesy performance of losing that game to the Charlotte Hornets at home as Cat drops 62 and Hunt 70 as well. Again, patreon.com slash count the dings. You have the Monday uh, OG show with Tom and Trey, Wednesday with Zosny, and Amin will be wherever we need him to be. Right? Does that count? No? no Amin's still not I'd comfortable still, with that. No. You know what? Maybe you'll be comfortable with our it's first just, topic. Like, I need, hey, I need you right here. Hey, I mean, <laughs> the boys need you. <laughs> it's time for you to be of service. So, all right. The news this week, and here's, can I just say my favorite part of this whole thing is people on Twitter Say it, like certain basketball people on Twitter saying, you know, if you were paying attention, this isn't a shock to you that Adrian Griffin got fired first season, halfway through first season, 30 and 13. Not surprising at all. No, it's surprising. It's not surprising that there were problems. That's been obvious since the start. But for a team to bail halfway through the first season of a new coach, is relatively unprecedented, right? Especially a team to be this successful. I don't think it's that surprising, honestly, Zach, because... If you've been paying if, attention, was well, Fuck you, Zach. <laughs> sure paying, attention. <laughs> paying attention is the wrong way, even though I did say that on Twitter. But, like, <laughs> um, paying attention is the wrong way. It's like, if you, one, paid attention, but two, like, you had to talk to people, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody was saying it's been a disaster. Like, that's been the consensus. It's, and it's not like, because, you know, we've been hearing the same shit about Darvin Ham. Mm-hmm. But like, Darvin Ham took a hodgepodge group that he got at the end of the year. They went to the conference finals last year. Right? Like, he's kind of proven to be, like, at least you could say he's been competent. That Like, the, the Bucks. Well, let me just say this real quick. I do not count a conference finals appearance if you get swept i just want to make that clear like you did not make that the is, conference that is if the you, zach, if you that is the zach oh you just rule. didn't show up you just yeah. might as well not have been that's there if you get that's swept. okay yeah. copy <laughs> blazers never made the conference finals with them <laughs> <laughs> copy but yeah people like we've been hearing about darvin hand but the the freaking and it's been different because obviously Giannis and dame and them they're going to carry it a little bit differently. Like Giannis was just complaining about the strategy. He was saying that the people that watch his jock strap could do it with more vigor. Like it was just, it was awkward how Giannis was doing it. I mean, they need you in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Someone call but, for a floater. <laughs> but the guys that like, just watch the Bucks. They don't look like a team. You can't show up and basically play pickup hoop. Where there's no order of operation, there's no hierarchy, there's no rhyme or reason to anything that they do besides Dame, Giannis, Chris Middleton, and sometimes Brooke Lopez being individually brilliant. He hasn't coached. What's he coached? What's the signature of Adrian Griffin's the defense coaching? in Toronto. Okay, I'm talking about no, I'm talking about on the Bucks. <laughs> What's he coached into them? Uh that Terry Stotts is not allowed here. <laughs> By the way, people saw right through that. Everybody yeah. thought that was weird. Like, what yeah. are you yelling at Terry Stotts for doing his job for? It's, well, it's, all right. <laughs> go ahead, man. So, yeah, Zach, that's two for two. Fuck you. Yes, <laughs> it's not a surprise at all. But it's not because did you pay attention to us? What Wad said is like, do you know people? Mm-hmm. Right. 
Because what the people are saying behind the scenes, look, if I hear it, that means that shit is loud as fuck, right? Because right. I, I was just literally somebody close to the Bucks came up to me at Vegas during the IST and was like, this is, in the words of my man Jason Madison, this whole team is ordering a serving of Mino Rolls. Like the whole thing. <laughs> and that's the difference between Darvin Ham and, <laughs> and Adrian Griffin. You can criticize Darvin Ham for certain decisions, whatever. Obviously, he's going to point to health, and I, I don't think that's an invalid reason why it's been hard for him to have a consistent lineup out there. But the locker room has not given up on Darvin Ham. These motherfuckers are not like, fuck this guy. And most importantly, LeBron has not given up on him. Because once LeBron gives up on you, then it's a wrap. Now, in the case of Adrian Griffin, the entire locker room was like, no. And most importantly, Giannis was like, no. And once you hit that point, you can't come back from that. I don't give a fuck how good you are as a coach. You cannot come back from the point of the, them saying, we don't believe in you. So that's what happened. It's been happening. And the reason why it's not surprising to me, at least, because I've been through this exact situation when I was in Phoenix when we let go of Terry Porter. Mm-hmm. We hired him, and I know exactly what the Bucks are feeling because we felt it in Phoenix. Before we went to camp, we we're like, what's he doing? <laughs> right? He, so he went to, he had the coaches retreat. <laughs> and now, mind you, this is Phoenix Suns' best offense ever, right? We mm-hmm. are every year, Steve Nash is running the best offense ever, but defense needs help. So like Terry's hard nose and Terry came from Detroit as an assistant and Terry was a, a tough guy of the player and he played with Steve Kerr, their friends or whatever. Cool. Terry will come in and you know, like coach us up on a defense event. And the coach's retreat was all just offense, but not Terry learning our offense. This was Terry bringing Flip Saunders Detroit offense. The one where they ran 700 down screens for Rip Hamilton to take a contested 20-footer with three seconds left on the shot clock, right? That one. And post-ups for Shaq. And and we're like, okay, maybe he's doing this because at some point he's going to introduce some of his shit and he wants the staff, many of whom were incumbents, some of whom were like new people, came from other places, to have a grasp of the material so that Mm – when they're talking to the team, it's not like, hey, I don't know. This, this is Coach Porter's thing. So then we get to camp. And in camp, the first day we worked on his offense. And the players are like, what are we doing? And we're like, no, 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 just give him some time, guys. He's just introducing his stuff that he's going to blend in with our stuff. <laughs> and then day two was more offense. And we're like, and then day three, we're like, because someone's, hey, uh, Coach, when are we going to start talking about defense? It was the shit from Hoosiers. It was like the move to the side, move to the back. Oh, take a charge, all that shit. <laughs> now, mind you, this is a team that has Shaquille O'Neal in his mid to late thirties, mm-hmm. Steve Nash in his mid to late thirties, Grant Hill in his mid to late thirties, Roger Bell in his mid to late thirties. You doing some Hoosier shit, man? Like, so everyone's kind of like, well, did they win a championship in Hoosiers? They sure did. Everyone was like, oh shit. This isn't like some temporary shit. This is what this motherfucker is planning on doing. And I remember when he said, hey, Boris Diaw, you're a power forward. You don't bring the ball up the floor. You grab a rebound, you find a guard, and you give it to the guard. And Boris's response, which is like telling, hey, Emeril Lagasse, you just make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Right, like yeah. he took it like that. So Boris would grab the rebound. Would it be an elevated peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah, not only Big that? Vegas does it, right? <laughs> so he would grab the rebound. He would take one hard dribble up the court. Then he'd look for like Steve, and then rush over to Steve and give him the ball like he was handing him a baby. And then he would turn and he'd look back at the bench like like that. And then <laughs> so him, Raja was like doing wild shit in practice. We just he'd be shooting hook shots. From like 20 feet on an empty basket while everyone else is working on the offense. Everyone was kind of like, we don't believe in this dude at all. And then, of course, the capper on it all was the day we were warming up and Shaq started singing. You guys remember uh, the T-Pain song, I could put you in a mansion somewhere Mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Shaq was singing, no baloney, we miss Mike (laughs) D'Antoni. Loud as fuck. Like, everybody in the gym could hear it. Yeah. But but isn't it different... uh, Look, 
I expected Adrian Griffin to be gone after the season mm-hmm. based on what it would have been saying. Right. Yep. Um, the difference between your situation with Terry Porter and this one, you guys were a few games over five, right? I think I just looked it up 28 and 23 or something like that. 20 and 23, yeah. So yep. still a winning team. This team's mm-hmm. 30 and 13. Two seed. It. And I get like, when you don't believe in a guy and you have championship that's aspirations, it like that, that, that's, it's it's a wrap. Like I, that's I totally what I'm get you. that. The I record totally is irrelevant. That. I just expected it to go through the season before the, he got the record is irrelevant because you're not gonna win anything meaningful if the guys don't believe in this dude. And the team was talented enough to win yeah. 30 games, and they're probably talented enough to win another 20 to 25 in the second half of the season if he continues. But they were never going to follow him. And if they don't follow him, that's the job, bro. Yeah. That's the job. X I mean, I, you could be I, terrible at every other aspect of coaching and great at they love me, believe in me, and follow me. Yeah. And you'll be a coach forever. You could be literally the greatest ever at all those other things and terrible at they love me, believe me, and follow me. And you get fired 30, yeah. you know, 41 games in. I, I think um, I had heard that even like assistant coaches were going, were like, with players like, yeah, man, I don't know. You no, know? You, like, when you, you lose, can't even get the assistant you're coaches. Lost, like, but but, yeah. but I see but I seen it with Terry Porter. Sure, like the yeah, assistants yeah. were like, What the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Like, like like that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like people keep hammering, oh my God, they have the same record as the Nuggets who just won the championship. But like, dog, the Nuggets don't have a question about Mike Malone from anyone <laughs> in the building. Yeah. Everyone in their building is like, What the fuck is this dude doing? Yeah. But also watch the Bucks play. Like Yes, Giannis against trash teams individually can bust ass. We've seen it over and over again. You're not just going to give Giannis the ball and he's going to cook the best defenses in the NBA. It don't work like that. In the regular season, he can get his numbers. But just watch them play. Like, look at how infrequently him and Dame are involved in actions together. These are two guys who are obviously (laughs) complementary players it's not even happening. It was I wrote I wrote in the news I was like the only way you should be able to stop a high pick and roll with Damon Giannis is with a young priest, an old priest, and a crucifix. Like that's literally <laughs> like that should be like an exorcism situation. Like there's what do you no need the way young priest for. It's like it's a Catholic thing you wouldn't understand. Um, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> a little a little of floating. Look, look, a lot of floating like, actually, but like, that's the thing. Like you don't. It. You don't see it 90 times a game. Like, like that should just be what their offense is. That's a red flag right yeah. there. And then, you know, again, it was in Bleacher Report. Management <laughs> visited practice, visited shoot around. They're watching That's a bunch of good. people <laughs> who are completely checked out. Yeah, They are completely checked out of what this guy has to say. Yeah, it, it was bad. So... Uh, according to CNN. And hold on, not to night. get all dorky, before we get into this, because that's fun. Yeah. Point differential of a 25 win team, Zach. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Don't hit me with I that 30 I, and 13. I don't think that's accurate. I don't think that's accurate. I'm going to be real. Like, they could have the point differential of a 40 win team and been 40. In the, the, dude, if he's lost the locker room, it doesn't matter. They, did, yeah. they don't care. Like David, the last guy to get it like this, and obviously that wasn't in his first year, but David Blatt, in many yeah. ways, it's even more egregious. The guy went to the finals and has the best <laughs> record in the conference. Yeah. Yeah. But if you lose a team, it doesn't fucking matter. And that's but what I'm to trying to fair, explain. To Ty Lue had the secret defense, you know, <laughs> to stop the KD Warriors like, in his in his pocket down the road. So they do. Um did we ever see no, that wait, secret defense? I don't think we ever Wade, saw that. No, it's like, wait for it. <laughs> wait, We're down Draymond's three months. Yeah. <laughs> wait for it. Draymond's got to get suspended again. I know it. That's the secret defense. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait for Draymond to do some. Call like, him a bitch. <laughs> some assaulting shit. All right. So let's get into like one. Does anybody here believe that Doc Rivers is going to fix this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I do. 100%. Depends on what you mean by fix. Make them championship contenders. Yes. Yeah. 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 Not a chance. If they were championship contenders last year, he can make them as good as they were last year. Yeah. They lost as a one seed. Uh, fine. <laughs> but seed. We, would all, we all went into the playoffs thinking they were contenders. He can make them as good as they were last year. As, as they were going, they were not as good as last year's team. There's there's two things that Doc is brings to the table, right? Number one is... 
whether or not we feel skeptical, motherfucker NBA players swear by like, well, what have you ever done? God, coach, mm-hmm. sure. uh, Doc walks in and says, I won a championship and I've won how many 50 wing seasons and how many times I've been to a conference finals and how many yeah. times I've been to the finals. He has all the hand Ubuntu. Thank you, Eddie Maze, with that one. <laughs> Ubuntu. I like the Ubuntu too, right? It feels so like, I came about. up with Ubuntu. Uh, yeah. It feels but like, I invented but like, Ubuntu. <laughs> just from the standpoint. Maze is one of the good ones. <laughs> Maze is one of the good ones. You know, just from the standpoint of. I know don't what I'm doing. Don't say that, Maze. Maze type, don't throw me under the bus. Zach, my white <laughs> brother. That's his... Oh, wait, we're still in January. We're good. Never mind. Uh, yeah, we got... <laughs> that's, that's in Cinephobe years or, or ahead. No, but like the, just being able to walk in the door and say, I know what the fuck I'm doing. That's, an, that's a huge step, number one. Number two is I won't just say I know what I'm doing. I'm going to have a clear idea of what I want to do. We're going to run this, 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 this. You're going to be here, and you're going to be my kind of guy that does this. And that role, like the dispersal. Definition. Definition. Sure. Find a pecking okay. order. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Chris Hold Middleton on. can't just break your offense in the middle of a set. Hold on, though. Wasn't Doc it. advising Griff? Do, that's uh, a that, hold on, hold on. You can get to hold the on. middle finger part of it. Little finger, excuse me, not you, middle you, finger. You ask a question, is Doc, is, yes. is Doc going to fix this? And so, one, the credibility. Two, he knows what the fuck he's talking about, right? Like, in terms of what he wants and the clarity and the clear, mm-hmm. concise communication. The players, having come from, one, a guy who had never had coached before, and they're like, mm-hmm. I don't know, man, when does this ever work for you? And two... Just hearing that clarity is like, oh, my God, this is so much better than what the fuck we just had. Yeah. That alone is going to make them a zillion times better. Right? That's true. So, like, Dame won't die on screens anymore, right? That's fine. Yeah. Well, but, the, the, well, the first thing that he's going to do is, he's, I'm assuming, we're going to go back to drop coverage. Hey, we were an elite defense doing it this way. Hey, we have two elite defenders. Like, this one thing I want to I want to get off my chest. I'm sick and tired of motherfuckers saying, well, he lost Drew Holiday. What did you expect? Drew Not the drop from top is... five, the bottom five. He's a fucking point guard. Why would he impact the whole it's team? Be- you guys because watch? He, this is the thing. Like that shit matters. He's not just like, oh, I'll guard at the top. He guarded everywhere, dude. So, like I'm, he guarded I'm everywhere, and he's you, better than anybody at it. Okay, let me tell you Zach, something. You honestly think Drew Holiday is worth eighteen spots in the rankings? That's absurd. What number happens, one? What what, number what happens every time we get to the playoffs? With that drop Zach, coverage, all that shit, they get Zach, fucking lit up. Zach, I watched Kevin Garnett turn Ray Allen and Paul Pierce into all world defensive players. You can't tell me. Let me know when Kevin Garnett good. time travels his ass to Milwaukee. Oh, no, no. You got Brooke Lopez, who was second in defensive player of the year voting last year, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, who, who won the a couple of years do ago. Do we want to talk Zach, about this Brooke Lopez second in defensive year? Zach, just, defensive player Zach, of the year? Zach, you Zach. can't tell me Drew Holiday's worth 18 slots in the rankings. That don't make no I'm sense. Not say, I'm not saying the schemes that Boston was doing is correct. You, you're, you're go, they're going to get lit up from the perimeter. That's what they've always been doing. That's all they always do. It's going to happen the regular season, too. And guess what? Their offense will actually be unstoppable finally. No, but but let me talk about the the defense. Let me talk about the the, the defense. Historically, every year, Bucks' team, Bud's Bucks, gave up the most threes. Their Mm -hmm. whole shit is you don't score in the paint. We'll Mm -hmm. let you shoot as many threes as you want, right? And that was my whole thing when they played Miami. It's like, Miami is going to game plan the fuck out of you to make you pay for that shit. So it's like, are we saying that this shit is going to become instantly a championship winning team? I'm not saying that. But if you're telling me, is it going to be better than what Adrian Griffin had him doing where, hey, we give up threes and we give up layups? The fucking Detroit? Okay. Do you, do you say, uh, look, the, the regular season is not with Sam. I'm talking about making them a championship contender. What's a championship contender? Define a team a championship. that contends for the championship. Like, no, what, does that mean? what does that mean? What makes does that conference mean? finals and wins at least one game. They can, they can win the conference finals. 100% <laughs> they yes. can do this because, again, if they make, if they carry an elite unit, one elite unit, and if that's offense, that's a version of this team we've never seen before. So if they're close to the middle of the pack on defense and they bring an offense and a, that can't be stopped, whether yeah. it's Boston, whether it's Philly, then I'm not too worried about it. This idea that they were better off with Drew Holiday is absurd to me. I'm no, sorry. No, it, it's, it's not necessarily. I mean, you also have to factor it like Chris Middleton can't move anymore. Like he just, sure. he just can't move. They have no depth. But you're right. Like. 
give Doc a great guard and a scoring big, and he can't be stopped. I mean, yeah, that Philly didn't work out, but like, look, the clip. Clippers didn't work it. No, you know what? What, do you mean, what does work out? Wait, what do you mean work out? What does work they, out? They, those teams are supposed to contend for a title, and but, they didn't. But 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 Zach, like, there's a difference between yo, they fucked up in the you most crucial Doc moment on TV for fucking years. And I now know. All of a sudden, fixed. The no, Doc is but I'm not. I'm not saying they're going to win a championship. I am saying that if you're saying. Can they get to a conference finals? You're saying absolutely not. There's no chance today. You're saying there's no way they can get to You picking them against Boston? I don't know. I'd you like to them, see it. I'd like to see Miami? what the next 40 games look like. Probably not. I'd like to see what the next 40 games look like, but I don't see. Like, you really think there's teams in the East that it's just impossible that the Bucks could beat? You really feel that way? I do not believe in the depth of this roster. I do not believe in Doc going against these other teams. Bucks Sixers. They'll both lose. Well, They'll both find a way to lose. Let's talk about CNN. Let's talk about CNN. All right, let's let's, yeah. Yeah. What happened last night? All right, so in the out of nowhere, in the middle of this inside the NBA, uh, you know, FIBA World Cup team edition, no offense to Candace Parker and Jamal Crawford and Adam Lefko, but this is not the A team, right? Like this is what is the Tuesday? That's a Tuesday lineup. Yep. That's uh, not a backup. That's a Tuesday lineup. Sure. It's not, I mean, <laughs> Team USA basketball is not a backup. This is their FIBA lineup. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> out of nowhere, Adam Lefko says, got some breaking news. CNN's reported. I thought it was a joke when the way he did it, the so way everyone was well, looking like, at hey, each other. He's like, got some breaking news here. And I thought they were, it was going to be like, you know, Shaq picked his nose and they got a clip of it or that's, something like that. Like, that's yeah. what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that's what it is. Literally, like, exactly that. CNN reporting, Doc Rivers has agreed to be the next Bucks head coach, which is not like out of left field news but, here. We're all expecting it to happen based on the events of the day and what's mm-hmm. being reported. Mm-hmm. And so... Like was well, like what like how does how does that happen? Doc Rivers is a bit of a pseudo celeb himself. Um, CNN's on air personalities are pseudo celebs. Okay, I would not be surprised if hey, Doc hey. Rivers and one of his pseudo celeb homies wolf, wolf, he wolf. just let them know what was going on Bang. and he reported it. <laughs> Guys, it, it's I'm like, not going to like, be responsible like Waz. I, I, let me tell you guys a story about a <laughs> CNN anchor who loves him some hoop. His name is Wolf Blitzer. He's got the situation. He does. He does he does and love I've him. got Wolf Blitzer and Doc Rivers as steadfast golfing buddies. Okay. They've been okay. all the fucking great courses. And Doc yeah. tells all these stories and Wolf loves it. And so Wolf hears the rumors and texts Doc, yo. Is this real? Are you about to be the Yo, head coach? Yo, you really going over there? Yeah. And Doc's yeah. like, yeah, it's happening. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah, it's happening, okay. whatever. So Wolf is like, fuck it. Let's break this. But Wolf also knows, yo, I'm a journalist. I can't be the one to break it. So let me just put the CNN sticker on it. Oh, so then they, okay. they tell the inside guys, yo, Wolf is saying this, but you can't say Wolf. You got to say yeah. CNN. Mm-hmm. They're uh-huh. like, wait, Wolf is saying this shit? Because here's the funny thing. They had Chris Haynes, who is one of the best in the business, and Chris Haynes is like, I don't, I don't know. They, I mean, they're working, man. I don't know. Yeah. Nothing's, nothing's in cement. And then you got uh, Shams and Adrian, both they're like, Arr! and it's like, <laughs> this is weird thing where TNT is like, okay, everyone who's reputable who does this on a daily basis is saying, no, nah, not yet. Is saying, not yet. <laughs> but my man plays golf. Oh, wolf. With him. So wolf plays golf. With him. Yeah. Because here's Dang. the thing it could not be anyone else. You know why? Because anyone else, they would say, shut the fuck up and get back and get me some more coffee or whatever. You don't, think, someone... you, don't think, you don't think Anderson Cooper is able no. to relay that? Anderson Cooper, you got Anderson Cooper playing golf and, and, and fucking hanging out with Doc see, Rivers? I can see Doc having a relationship with don't Chris sure. Cuomo. Chris Cuomo don't I work see... there no more. Oh, he got fired for that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, here, here's, Lemon here's, is gone. The only other is person. Is John King still there? Yeah, uh, yes, they need I think the, so. The, he's, he runs the big board. Here's here's the only so- other person that I he's here's a Mel, there Mel Kiper. Um, the only other person I said was Boris Sanchez, but this is why I said it's not Boris because Boris would have hit me up first. Mm. 
Is that a flex mm. floater? That I don't is, know what that, that is. Like that is. It would have hit, hit me up first. Boys hit me up first. For those just <laughs> listening, not watching us on YouTube. The from seeing that. No, just did like no. a mini like Onyx B boy I'm, stance yo, there. I'm deep. Like I roll deep in CNN. I roll deep in CNN, bro. Deep in CNN. I roll deep in CNN. Text Wolf Blitzer right now. You don't roll for you know, exactly. Then you don't roll for wolf. shit. But guys, no we way. know it's an on air personality from CNN. We know Doc Rivers absolutely gets his news from CNN, so he's homies with these people. Mm-hmm. Like, we know the vibes. You don't They're think hanging he's a BBC, out in fucking uh, Malibu America all the guy? time. BBC America? No. Yeah. Okay. He's got BBC homies, but not hey, the yo. British. <laughs> 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 Oddly enough, you know who's in that group? Wolf Blitzer. Um, <laughs> do you think there's any like, like how much shit do you think Lefko gets for this? Not like you always like get fired or represent, but it's just, just a, like this like sticks with you, right? Or is this Zach, not on I'm him? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I know Lefko. Lefko wouldn't be like excited. He saw that shit. We got to break it first. Particularly again when you have your in-house nah. newsbreaker. He's just not going orders. Yeah. This feels like someone from upstairs, probably from the discovery side, it. was like, "Run it, yeah." Bro, and dude, when dude. they put it out, it said CNN staff. Yeah, no, they didn't even put as a byline if, on it. Yeah, as if some lackey, you know, on the copy desk could just be like, "Yeah, Doc, it's official. Run I mean, it." It's not. Like, yeah, that's good. It doesn't work like that. It, it was clearly me, a big shot over there. Who it did reminds this. me of uh, Kevin Durant's free agency in 2016, working for CBSSports.com, and they had me pre-record five it's different of videos of, of where he could go. Oh my god! And then it, I, it was it was staying with the Thunder. It was oh like the Clippers, god. maybe the um, oh the god. Warriors, the Knicks. Celtics, and the Knicks. Those were the yep. those were the five I recorded, and. Uh, and the morning that he signs, for some reason, this CBSSports.com video in the bank of KD signs with the Celtics gets pushed through Yahoo's system. So it is it is on Yahoo of me saying Kevin Durant wow. signed with the Celtics. I wow. wake up to my phone fucking exploded. My phone is literally wow. on fire. Literally on fire. And... I, I'm like, I take this to my bosses. I'm like, yo, what the hell is going on? Like, clearly this got, this got published. <laughs> <laughs> this got published. And they're like, they're like, oh, don't say anything publicly. I was like, well, no, we just say we pre-recorded some shit. Somehow this got out. Like, no, 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 no. So I'm still getting peppered with like requests. That's How do you know crazy. this? Fuck this guy. He doesn't know shit. Like he, like he That's doesn't know what he's doing. Like crazy. he's got no reputation for reporting all this shit. Right. That is Which is all crazy. Accurate. And, uh, and then an hour later, they're like, okay, we can say that it was just a mistake. Who I'm like, it? I don't know. I never found you, out. You never try to find out. No, you, you know, cause I just immediately went to the fact that sometime within the last year, when remember when Lamar Odom, w- like went into a coma, yeah, at uh, at the I'll never Honey Ranch, yeah. they asked me to pre-record a Lamar Odom has died video. Jesus nice. Christ, this is and insane. I just immediately thought, like, what if that had gotten out? What if that gets oh published God. to Yahoo? That's in <laughs> like, what a decision. I and I declined. I said, "There's no way in hell I'm I'm pre-recording that." And they finally decided, "Okay, that's a good decision." Like, yeah, we don't need this. Speaking of Lamar Odom, um, I was, he was out. on crack. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was out with um my cousin like about a week ago and Lamar Odom was in the spot and my cousin he walks by us and my cousin gives him a dap the whole thing and he's like yo he introduces me to Lamar Odom I'm like bro you a Queens legend blah 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 all of this shit giving him his flowers yeah, all of this yeah, shit yeah, right yeah. <laughs> and he leans over to the woman companion that he's that he was with and he goes see I told you <laughs> she didn't believe him. Wait a second. I can just imagine Odom explaining to this girl, like, yo, you know I'm one of them ones. Like, it's me. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I was the magic of my time in New York, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, yeah, yeah. She looked up the and steps, like, like you play for the him. Clippers. I don't know, man. <laughs> and he literally said, see, I told you, that shit cracked me up. I was so proud of myself for that one. Uh, That's an assist that Lamar Odom got, as opposed to one that he gave out. Yeah. 
you think he needed help that night? <laughs> yeah, I look. I mean, that clearly that shit. He felt the need to confirm that shit. So clearly that shit. <laughs> Let's move on to the Miami Heat. They acquire scary Terry Rozier for Kyle Lowry and a protected first round pick in 2027 that will be unprotected in 2028. Does this move the needle for pushing the Heat up the Eastern Conference hierarchy? I mean, to me, they upgraded essentially the roster that went to the NBA Finals last year. Like, as much as y'all love Max Struess and Gabe Vincent, we love those guys. Gabe Vincent hasn't played a single game this year, basically. And Max Struess has been a bit of a disappointment in Cleveland. A so, Ooh. like, they upgraded Cavs the roster. do not agree with that. They, they, they don't agree that he's been a disappointment? The they love they him. They think he's been he's worth 30, 30% from three or some shit. This is absurd. This is absurd. Thank um, God for Dean Wade. This is, this is absurd. <laughs> um, this is absurd. But, yeah, they, the, the team is better. And I think, Terry, people don't understand, like, you know, we talked about Doc and, and making people understand roles. Like, nobody's better than that at Spolstra. Like, every single person who's ever played for Coach Spo, they're just like, yo, my role was so clearly fucking defined as to what this guy wanted me to do in order for me to get my time. Like, Terry is going to understand what his role is on the team. It's going to be clearly defined. It's going to be shit that he can excel at. And he's better than Kyle Lowry. Like, yeah. this is not hard to understand. They've upgraded the position. But, but, but so how obvious. much, of, how much of, they did, but how much, I mean, that's like, you upgraded 38 year old Kyle Lowry, right? Like that's not yeah. exactly a high bar to clear, but is, is Terry Rose. Like I've never been a huge Terry Rozier guy. Um, I do love the way he's played the last couple of years in Charlotte. Me too. But how much of how much of that is able to translate into what Miami needs and will ask him to do? Who you rather handle the ball, Terry Rozier or Tyler Hero? Oh, Terry Rozier for sure. Because Hero been doing a lot of pounding the rock lately, boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, get that man off the rock, please. And t- he's just more qualified for a lot of these things. They're not going to ask him to come in. And be fucking John Stockton, okay? Right. And from pick and roll Look, after pick and roll. And you guys would create offense and he can I'm, create offense. Yeah. Right? I'm going to be honest with yeah. you. They're not even going to ask him to be Charlotte Terry Rozier. Exactly. Well, like, like that's the thing. I'm like Everyone's like, oh, so you think? No, I don't think he's going to average 24 points a game. I don't think he's going to even come close to that. Because yeah. he's what he's going to be basically is an evolution of a little bit of Boston Terry Rozier and a little bit of Charlotte Terry Rozier. The Boston Terry Rozier, dude, you're going to have to lock in defensively Mm -hmm. because they're going to go to the playoffs. They're going to see one of these guys, Donovan Mitchell, Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey, Damian Lillard, Jalen Brunson. You're going to have to see one of them. So you need someone who's going to be able to guard that guy. And they haven't had that a a dedicated person for that. You could do a, a Caleb Martin and some of these other guys, but like they need someone locked in on that. Number one, number two, offensively, can he make shots? Yes, he can make shots. Can he create his own shot? Yes. Can he run a pick and roll? Yes. All right, bro. Just do that sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you can sit in the corner. Like, they don't need him to do what he did. I know Mike Ryan, we're, we're in a group chat with him, and he's like, oh, my God, this guy, and he's not going to buy it. And I'm like, dude. Why would you he got- buy in? I don't know. Because, because people think, like, oh, this dude got, like, 100 shots up every night in Charlotte. Now he's going to come here and he's going to be cool with like seven. I'm like, yes, because <laughs> yeah. he got a hundred shots up. Sh- <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, like that's one thing. It's like in Boston, he was playing a role and he's like, I can be more than this. I can be mm-hmm. greater than this. You're not giving me an opportunity to shine. So he yes. goes to Charlotte. He has every opportunity to shine. And it's like, Oh shit. We we're awful every goddamn night. So now it's like, you know what? I can play a role. Now that I've seen the other side, it's no different than what Trevor Reza did. Years ago, when the uh, the Lakers won in 09, and he took the same fucking deal in Houston, mm-hmm. then to come back and try to defend the championship, and I was like, "Well, why'd you do that?" It's like, "Cause I want to be an All Star." He yeah. thought, "I'm gonna go to Houston. I'm gonna be the star, whatever." And he got all the shots up, and they were they terrible. Weren't. Yeah, and he bounced around. And eventually, he found his way back to being a role player. So mm-hmm. this is what's happening to Terry Rozier. The difference is 
he gets his money. He still gets paid. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. This is not a contract year. Yeah. He's got two more <laughs> years left on his deal after this one. Like, he's playing to win. He's playing for basketball pride. Like, the idea that he's just going to show up and start sulking, like, it's, it's posturous. The heat, like, come yeah. on, man. It, <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. Um, it's going to be completely fine. <laughs> before it means got to dip, we, you need to head over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings, because we will now get his quick thoughts on Joel Embiid's 70 and a win and Carl Anthony Towns 62 and a loss. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns scores 62. <laughs> so you can say, I mean, what's your first note? <laughs> <laughs> what's your first note? Um, he scores 62 on a night where Embiid already had 70 on the anniversary of Kobe's 81 everything's lining up for another 70 point game, right? Last year, we had two 71 point games within two months of each other. This one, we might have 70 on the same night. And what happens? 59 points through three quarters, fourth quarter, they blow a 15 point lead on the Charlotte Hornets of all teams. Mm. Uh, maybe this got scary. Terry. Scary to Terry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Hornets come back and I couldn't think of a more wolves thing than cat hunting that out, the team giving up on what is winning basketball against this team and losing that game. This is perhaps the best part about it. The last two minute report came out and like the refs completely shit the bed on the like end of that 10 game. 10 missed calls. 10 missed calls, including the, the one where Towns drives to the basket and three different people foul him yeah. and no fouls called. And nobody from Minnesota. This might be the first time in the history of the NBA. Not a single person opened their fucking mouth about the refs. I, and I was, you know, I, for one, I was like appreciative that like yeah. they made the focus of their anger and disappointment all about we fucked this shit up. Mm-hmm. I well, can you please play this clip, Maze? It's in the chat. Um, Chris Finch, he, and <laughs> he was talking to Carl Towns in this clip. I'm sorry. I know well, who he was talking to. No, he, he, he didn't he like at one point in the press, like they asked him, we talked about Towns and he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> also my favorite part so ant ant has a video or has a interview at his locker yeah. after and he's yeah. going through like Im- like immature as fuck we played tonight you know it's hard to get in the rhythm when i've been shooting all game blah 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 and he's like but he just at one point he's like but you know congrats to cat on the career high you know happy to be a part of it i'm like what <laughs> no nah, but that's that he kind of threw his mind to the bus because he was part of that shit too bro he was yeah, for no, sure he was. he was for sure but that was so funny. And especially on a night, like, like Cat and Embiid have this thing, right? Like where Embiid has just punked him time after time after time. Cat but so badly to be on that to level. one up him. Mm. But doesn't know how. Yeah. Doesn't know how. And I just like, it, I, I said this earlier today, like, is it possible that Cat has a lot of Paul Pierce in, him, in that he just simply cannot get out of his own way? Wait, how oh, does Paul Pierce take it out of his own? Or not Paul Pierce, I'm sorry, Paul George, Paul George, Paul George. Oh, sorry, Paul, oh. Pierce. No, Paul Pierce. No, oh. well, Paul Pierce maybe now, but Paul George. Yeah, like, Paul uh, Pierce no. with the strippers uh, is <laughs> tough to get out of the way. Nah, yeah. no, Why would you? No, but, so, but, but Paul yeah, George. Stay in the way. <laughs> Paul George keeps getting in his own way. I got, right? her, I got her from girlfriend.com. <laughs> you hit him up and you ask him for a girlfriend and it's in your truth. <laughs> oh, my God. The truth. Yeah, no, there's a lot of um there's a lot of similarities. I think Paul George over the years, as the years have gone on, <clears throat> I think he's kind of cleaned up his image and has become less annoying. And also his game was never stupid. You know right. what I mean? Like his actual play was never that of an idiot. Whereas Carl Towns, like if you guys remember the freaking Memphis series, was just like you're a freaking loser. You all you know how to do is play like a loser, and so I don't know. And Paul George, some of the shit, and even on Patreon, we can't get into some of the shit that Paul George has been accused of. Yeah, um, it's it's bad. It's, it's like it's <laughs> it's, <definitely> it's, <laughs> it's borderline criminal. Some of the stuff that Paul George has been accused of. Um, doing to his fellow NBA players and teammates and stuff like that. And obviously him and uh, what's his name? Roy Hibbert was fighting over chicks and 
it was just a mess. Um, you know, he got a stripper pregnant on uh, Cali Rivers and ended up playing for Dodgers. Right I guess we are going to go through well, that No, 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 no. But that's not why people hate him. People oh. don't hate him because he got a stripper pregnant. Come on. That's, that's regular <laughs> NBA shit. Like, you know, like See, infidelity. Nobody hates him for the infidelity. But, like... Some of the stuff that he's done, again, I can't really say this shit because it's so flagrant um, that he's been accused of anyway. Uh, It's whatever. But, like, at least he's comporting himself like an adult. He doesn't go on podcasts and be like, I'm the best big man shooter ever. Yeah. Which he might be. He might be. You know, it's like him or Dirk, right? And, like, percentage-wise, it would be him. And then what? And then what? And then what? Well, Waz, I don't know if you Let's remember, say it but is true. they they did something more impressive than what Denver did last year. You know, Denver won the title for sure, but the Wolves got through the <laughs> play-in tournament. That's that's arguably more impressive. <laughs> that's what I mean, man. Just ask Pat that's and Pat Bev, man. Like this. And then I, I don't know if you um, hang a banner. So so the Jeff Teague pod clip because Jeff Teague's like, look, man, the guy is so talented. He's done yeah. things that nobody on his league has ever been able to do at his size and with the strength and the skill and all of that. And the co-host is like, yeah, but he changes his voices in interviews. Can't do and it. Teague, can't even, Teague just started, he lost it, man. He lost it. <laughs> it's so funny because he does. Like you see, Cat on Twitch. I, man, you know. See Cat in a sideline interview. Yeah, man. You know, we just gotta we gotta buckle down, and <laughs> rotate. We gotta do our job. All yeah. right. Which of these clips you guys want to hit first, Chris Finch? Yeah, Chris give Finch. Me, give me please. Finch. Yeah. Let's do Chris Finch here. It was an absolute disgusting performance of defense <laughs> and immature basketball. Um, all the way through the game, so it really didn't slip away. It had been there from the jump, so. This is what happens when you uh, have this type of approach. <laughs> Disgusting. Absolutely. Need a hot hand, look for a hot hand. But at some point, we got to get back to making the right play. We got to get back <laughs> to doing the right things. Um, and, um, you know, that's just, uh, like I said, there's a lot of ways to be immature. There's always a lot of ways to be immature. Um, and there was a lot of immature performances here throughout the the roster we totally disrespected uh, the game ourselves um and we got exactly what we deserve so chris did did you also see i mean did it turn into carl trying to hunt like a absolutely a, a big number and- yeah i mean it was i mean but for a while I mean, <laughs> um but you know down the stretch we, we got uh, we, you know kind of dried up for us but um yeah so. absolutely absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Give me, give me, give me Ant. Give me Ant Edwards, yeah. this please. Is my, oh, my God. This is my favorite. Because this facial expression the whole time is like the a kid that, whose hand was in the cookie jar. Like, he's like, yes. you got me. Y'all got yeah. me. We yeah. posted it. Amateur as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just in terms of the focus that you guys had, um, you see that kind of we don't focus. in terms of you know, <laughs> he wasn't focused on the jump at all. <laughs> Cat just had a great night. He wasn't focused on. He started out obviously he started out on fire. Did you think that it turned the focus turned from winning the game to just try to just get trying him? To get him? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> First six seven shots, I think everybody was pretty much just trying to see if we get a hundred. I know I was. So this team has been so mature for most of the year and handled immature as fuck tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he got so. I think all of us, as the 15 of us in here, we all 14 of us wanted to see him get 80 or whatever. We might have learned from it, though. Is that hard for you to go from not shooting at all? Hell yeah. Or hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I'm pissed. But, man, it's all good. He's Career high. Best. Congratulations to Big Cat. He definitely will for six for sure. So. It's one of a kind of performance. So I appreciate him for giving me that. <laughs> And that was that you you just recognized that and made that decision right and so just I mean you only took one shot in the first half and so you just, just that way. Yeah. Yeah. All bad. I don't even know what to say. I let us down. What do you guys what do you guys have to do to get back on the you know right path as far as defensively as well? Going into the next game just to refocus. Oh, you got to stop worrying about offense as a team. Everybody, you make a shot, miss a shot, not getting the ball, getting the ball. I think that's the main thing. If we just focus on locking up on defense, I think we'll be able to get back on track sooner than later. 
And when you feel that focus slip away in the game, like, is there a way to get it back and like recenter? Or, um, I mean, we talk. It's kind of hard, but I mean, I feel, I feel like after the talk, we yeah, we definitely try to change lanes. <laughs> you had to talk after the game. Yeah, yeah. he's smiling. He's, he's, he's the best man. He's the best. He's when do you think? Best. When do you think Towns gets traded? This summer after the season, this summer he's gone. I think so, because ultimately they're not gonna. They're probably not gonna get to the finals. Um, they're paying. They're, they're Greece, not gonna get to the finals. That, there's no probably about they're, it. Like, they're, they're not gonna, they're gonna, not gonna, gonna get to the finals. <laughs> I know, but they're paying three they centers a hundred and hundred and four a hundred and twenty million dollars. How are you dedicating one hundred and twenty million dollars to the center position in twenty in twenty twenty four, Zach? Make well, that make sense to me. Well, w- one's a shooter. Uh, one's a good, you know, <laughs> off the ball or, you know, off the bounce attacker on offense. That's Nazarene. And then one can't catch, but he's a good defender. So you put all three of those together. That's a real Who good Who would center. you rather have, Rudy or, or Towns? Rudy. Me too. At least, I know, at least I know regular season defense is taken care of and we are making the playoffs. I think regular season defense is taken care of too. I think like... People kind of hard on if Rudy got played off the court against the Clippers. Like, bro, some of the Look, worst Don, perimeter mean, Donovan was, in the Donovan history was of life. Yeah. It was disgusting. But also, I do think it's, I do think it's way easier to game plan him in a postseason I series. Think so I think um, so. But when you got Ant and Jaden Daniels, right. Like, it's different, man. These guys right. are well hyper should, elite defenders. It should be different. I think it's going to be we'll different, see. man. Because we'll even see. in, you know, even right. in the loss to the team whose postseason they were more impressive than, um, I thought they were pretty decent against the Nuggets last I year. I thought the Nuggets didn't take them seriously at all. <laughs> this is the thing. Everyone's like, hey, you know, the Wolves played tougher than anybody. I was like, nah, not really. That was pretty much them just like walking through the first round. Uh, all right. I tell you, the Wolves are facing the Mavs in the first round. How confident are you that the Wolves win that series? I'm pretty confident against the Mavs. I am. I don't know, man. I'm pretty confident against the Mavs. I think, because, like, even in that last Utah series that they played against the Mavs where, like, Jalen Jalen Brunson essentially pantsed Donovan Mitchell. Um, That's the worst... The re- Postseason defense I've ever seen is Donovan Mitchell in that series. Yeah, worst uh, ever. There was times where Rudy had to step out on on um, Luca, and it wasn't like completely embarrassing. I really think mm-hmm. they'll beat the Mavs, um, especially because the Mavs are just so soft defensively. Man, like they're not going to be hard to score on. You know the problems yeah. that the Wolves present. The Mavs are just not like the problems that the Wolves have. The Mavs are not in a position to exploit it. I don't think. So I think the, I think the Clippers are giving them a tough time. Oh, I Clippers think, are uh, wax them. <laughs> I think because oh, <laughs> I think because the Clippers will guard and you know exploit Rudy's weaknesses on defense, like Harden, um, his pick and roll operation and stuff. But I think the the, the uh, I think there would be a great matchup for, against the Lakers. Um, Phoenix, I think they'll beat. I, I've lost all faith in Phoenix. I, I, I'm not really for them. Yeah, I'm done with Phoenix. I, as much as I love Devin Booker, uh, it's just KD as the the focal point, as the leader of a team. It's just it's it's not for me. Hmm. I'm out on KD as the like guy that's supposed to be galvanizing a group <laughs> and like doing yeah. anything besides showing up to work and then now, going home. Now, what if I tell you Bradley Beal's in the mix? For leadership, double down on my outness. <laughs> I'm double out. <laughs> I'm double out. Yeah, I'm out on Phoenix. I honestly, man, obviously Denver's like way better than them, and and I think the Clippers are a tough matchup. But I'm like, I don't see anybody else in the West that they should be overly worried about matchup wise. Um, I, I mean, think Ant could take over games, man. Like. I think he can. On both ends. I think he's a little young to expect it every night. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. He's not every doing night in the playoffs. Like I think, I like you tell me, like a year or two from now, I don't think you can really mess with Ant at the end of a game. 
but I don't think it's there. I think it's a little premature. I think it's a little bunch of us projecting what we think he's going to be. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this Wolves team, man. Uh, I just you're out on this Wolves team. I'm all in. I, I it's the reason why. What does I, that mean, What does that mean, though? You're all in. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in in the sense that if they don't play the Nuggets, uh huh. If they're not playing the Nuggets, I will feel pretty confident picking them in a series. They play the Thunder. They're I guess if they the play thunder. the Thunder, they've gone deep in the playoffs. I think right? they're beating the Thunder. I think the Thunder, as a playoff threat, are a bit overrated. They are so little. They're going to get, oh my God, teams are going to put so much fouls on these dudes. Like mm-hmm. they're so tiny. It's like beautiful skill. Like the skill level up and down the fucking lineup sheet is incredible. But yeah. they're so small. Like they're small at every position. They play a small point guard. They play a small. And even Dort is he's girthy, but he's short. So guys can just shoot over him. They play a small. Uh, girthy, girthy, but short gets the job done sometimes. I hear. That's what I've been told. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> even Shea is Shea is pretty slight as a three yeah. man. He tries as he tries, but he's pretty slight. You know, obviously Chet, who's my guy, but he's slight. I, I just think I think people are overrating OKC as a playoff team. Like, so Waz, you're saying they can't stop three centers? <laughs> Wait till you see them play them together. All right? <laughs> Too much size, they gotta, baby. They got to yeah. They got to get rid of Cat. I, I wonder much. what they could get for the guy, but they got to get rid of Cat. I got to think, like, look, man, I, I know the reputation. He's still super talented. He's and he's, talented and, and, and he's signed long term. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but I don't think yeah. this is like a trading Zach Levine situation in Chicago. I think I think he Well, Zach get... Levine, not only is he an attitude problem, he never plays. He's got like a, right. a chronically injured knee. Uh, so it's like, you know, we'll see, man. I'm I'm excited for the playoffs. Can't wait. Can't wait to see that uh, Doc Rivers magic get worked on the Bucks like you guys guaranteed. <laughs> uh, make sure you check checking out Tom and Trey and Floating Amin on Mondays. Check out Zazni with Floating you Amin on Wednesdays. You that you doubted Glenn Rivers, okay? Yeah, no, he's got the, for sure. He's got, the, he's got the Milwaukee background. You haven't heard uh-huh. the sell job? You know, he played at Marquette, the Milwaukee background. He's Hold a Midwest let, guy. Let me, let, me be, let me be a media member at a press press comments for Doc. <laughs> 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 <laughs>